are doing at the moment that we should give up our freedoms for the greater good of society, for our safety. We live in a society where from the moment that we can understand other people, we are told that we deserve the right to have rights. It's built so in fashion to our psyche that when we asked on the survey if you'd be willing to give up uh, any of your rights to protect yourself from something you fear in the future, most of you didn't even respond. It's even built into our language where we call them rights for rights and wrongs, where every time we say the word right, we're telling ourselves this is the best choice, this is a necessity. But they aren't. And then you've shown through history that whenever people are not held in the act, are not given enough security, or not held accountable enough for their action, they're given free rank through their rights, that they do not act responsible, and safety for society is not guaranteed. So I'd like to show historically that we should give up our rights, that when we give them up, we wouldn't change anything, we wouldn't notice a difference. And hopefully by then you'll see that we'll even be happier, more free, uh, with a more restricted lifestyle. So historically, whenever we felt threatened, we've given up uh, more freedoms in order to ensure our protection. Like when the country was first started, we were under the Articles of Confederation. Those did nothing. And as a result, the government couldn't protect us or couldn't guarantee our safety that resulted in rebellion, Shay's rebellion. But we buckled down, we enforced more laws, and uh, we formed what the United States is more like now. Because of that, we're safer. Also, uh, recently, after 9-11, we introduced the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act allowed the government to have more information about us than ever before. It restricted our freedoms in an extent that we haven't lived with. But we're safer now. Crimes have gone down across the board, and you can now more easily walk the streets without being worried about terrorist attacks or anything like that. Um, what if we were to give up our freedoms when we are? We wouldn't notice that much of a difference. At the, also on the survey, we asked which freedoms do you use on a daily basis. The only like response we got from pretty much everyone's freedom of speech. To restrict those other freedoms that we don't really use in order to allow our safety, we wouldn't miss them. You don't use them. Uh, and these restrictions would then allow them for further protection. Uh, let's say like when these freedoms aren't restricted, like freedom of speech, uh, it can lead to terrible things. Like, Do you remember from over the summer the 14 minute video on YouTube the innocence of Muslims, where it was just this racist, bigoted, this horrendous film that insulted people in the Middle East so much so that they called for blood and rioted, and they took blood. By September 28th, 19 people had died because of one American's desire to make a film to express his freedom of speech. I don't think freedom of speech for a person is worth the life of anyone. And by relieving our rights, we'll be happier. Uh, there's this book, The Paradox of Choice by Barry Schwartz. In it, he argues that for every choice you have, you get a certain amount of happiness. So for every single decision, you get this much happiness. And if you can only go forward, then that's great, you get this much happiness. And say if you can go right, then you have the ability to go right and forward. Right could be awesome, you might miss out on it. So when you go forward, you could be thinking of our rights, you only get half that happiness. It weighs down on you. When you then you could get another choice, it reduces it in half, and again and again. This can be argued with rights. With our freedoms, we have so much choice that we can't really be happy doing whatever we want to do. But by restricting it, we can find uh, more meaning in our life if it's all we've ever known. So, in conclusion, we should give up our rights, or restrict them a little bit at the very least. It'll make us happier, it will, well, we won't really notice much of a difference. And historically, it's what we've always done. that you give up. 
up. Like, we live in the United States where you're always given the ability to change back the policies that you want. I'm not saying that you should give up your ability to vote or anything, just freedom of speech or things that can hurt other people. And what if it goes as far as the point when you can't take it back? I don't think there's ever a point for that. Looking at the Revolutionary War, that you could say that maybe that was a point where we couldn't take it back, but we did. chosen, and I can honestly say that I didn't enjoy any of that. So why would we extend a similar control on our government? I'm not saying we're going to choose what we eat, but it is going to affect us. Um, and is our national security in such a bad state that we have to even consider giving up our freedoms for the greater good? I don't think so. So when the government analyzes taking away our freedoms, it's usually because they want to protect the citizens. The government's, one of the government's main worries is terrorism. And according to an article titled The Terrorists Are Winning, uh, the goal of most terrorists is to change government policy using violence. That is to say, if we change the way our country runs because of a terrorist attack, it would be fulfilling their mission. We would be actually be letting them win. So we need to fear less of terrorism and more of losing our liberties. Because giving up our liberties would be restricting our absolute freedom. And it would also take away the attributes that make us human. There, ha there needs to exist an ultimate good and an ultimate bad. If we get rid of the bad, then we're not given the choice to make the right decision. It's only the good and the bad. Also, giving up our liberties does not guarantee the happiness and protection of everyone. This reminds me of a quote of Benjamin Franklin, he says, people willing to trade their freedom for temporary security deserve neither and will lose both. Mm -hmm. If the government were to control some of your freedoms, are you really living your life anymore? And besides, there is no way that the government can protect all of the citizens. There will always be a way to beat the system. There will always be a way to inflict harm on others. The only thing that I could think, the only policy that I can think of would be implementing security procedures in public facilities, such as restaurants, such as libraries, schools, bus stations, train stations. I mean, I think that's pretty irrational. Especially now, <laughs> since um, our freedoms, since our security isn't such an, isn't in a, a terrible state. Also, would you be willing to uh, implement that security on, in your own home? I mean, Thanksgiving is coming up. You're going to have relatives over? Are you going to like pat them down when they enter your house? That's, that's not true. Also, the United States government does not have the right to infringe on people's privacy. The Fourth Amendment states that the right of the people to secure in their own persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures 
shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or of affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched, and the persons and things to be seen. So what that basically means is that the government cannot search nor detain you or your items unless they have probable cause. But just because they have probable cause doesn't mean that it's right. It may be just filed under the amendment, but it doesn't mean that it's right. So going back to President Bush, pretty interesting guy. Um, he had probable cause that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. So in March 2003, he sent troops to Iraq, starting the war, and two months later, he gave his mission accomplished speech, promising to end major, uh, major combat in Iraq. But the war spanned until December 2011, and no weapons of mass destruction were ever found. So in conclusion, everything I have referred up to at this, well, everything I have referred up to at this point has been at the national level. But I kind of want to take it down to our community, more specifically our classroom. Uh, two weeks ago, we took an in-class survey, and you guys were asked which freedom you would be willing to uh, give up for the, the greater good. No one gave a specific freedom at all. The question was either left blank or I don't know. So what that tells me is that we haven't really been threatened enough to actually think about this, and there's no point in it. Take away the ultimate path, they will not let people choose to do the right thing. They're not developing a sense of what is right and what is wrong. They just know that it's there. So, how, again, how are we ever going to advance? 